in Photoshop Elements 12, in the quick edit mode, now we have more options to work with our images. We have the adjustments panel here on the right, but we also have three new panels, effects, textures, and frames. So whenever we select these, we will get new presets. For the effects, we have these 10 presets. And uh, if I want to see what's the name of a preset, I just need to hover over it with the mouse. So I can see this is the black and white preset, but let's just try something different, maybe this one here at the bottom. So this is called Vintage. That looks quite nice. And um, then let's just go to the next one, the next panel or set of presets, Textures. Now these won't replace each other, they will be added on top of each other. So if I want to increase the whole Vintage look, I can add an old canvas preset onto this image. That looks quite nice and it works together with the previous effect. Now I just need to choose a frame, so that's the last option, and let's choose something that goes with this whole theme, this one here on the top right. Once again we have 10 presets for frames, 10 presets for textures and for effects as well. And if you want, you can always play around with your frame so you can move the image around inside the frame. That's a really cool feature, I quite like that. And uh, when I'm ready, I can just accept it with that little tick. And if I'm not happy with the changes I've done in the frames, I can always click on reset, this icon here on the top, re which resets the image. But if I like it, then I can just simply keep it like this and export it or share it with the options also here in the uh, Elements Editor. Restoring old photographs has never been easier. Now in Photoshop Elements 12, there is a feature in the Guided Edit mode called Restore Old Photo. So I have this old photograph here and let's see what we can achieve with this feature. So I'm going to click on it and then this is like a guided tour that takes me through the steps that's necessary to uh, restore this photograph. So first of all I need to crop the image, which is true because this is a scan or a photograph of the photo. So I will probably only need this part of the image, so I don't need that very damaged part on the top and I'm going to cut here on the bottom as well. Um, also we have a missing corner but I will try to fix that with another tool. So I'm just going to accept this change for now and I press Command or Control 0 to fit the image to my screen. Then I can either use the Spot Healing Brush or the Healing Brush or the Clone Stamp tool to recover the parts that are missing. So like this missing corner here or these scratches to get rid of them. To get rid of the scratches, the easiest is to use the spot healing tool. And I can always change the size of the brush if I have the tool options selected. So here I can change the size of my brush and I can also choose a type or method, but content aware is most of the time perfect. So I'm going to keep, keep it on that. Maybe I change the size a bit and make it a bit smaller. Okay, now I'm going to just draw over these parts here. I did quite a good job already. Let's get rid of this and then that. There's another scratch here on the left. Another little missing part. Then this is a little bit more tricky part here, the hand. But seems like it did a really good job on that as well. Yes, there's a little bit of uh, scratches around the image here. And uh, maybe we can get rid of this little spot as well. For that maybe I'm just going back and changing my size, the brush size, and I'm going to click. Yeah, that took it away quite nicely. Now we can make the brush size bigger, and I'm going to draw over this bigger part here on the right. So let me just draw over this. I don't know what was there in the original photo, but we definitely don't need it in this restored version. And then let's see what we can achieve with this corner here. So if I draw it over, it actually did a really good job. So I can just try to draw over it a couple of times more, but I think that will be perfect for now. Of course, we can always use the clone stamp tool as well, and maybe alt click here on the trousers and then make the size a little bit bigger. 
and then draw over this part here at the bottom just to make it a little bit even better than the automatic spot healing brush effect and I think that will work quite well so we are ready with this part, the healing part, and now we can either use the dust remover uh, or not. It's not necessary to always follow all these tabs. Uh, this is good for dust and scratches on the image. In this case, I think we healed all the scratches with the healing brushes. And now we can just improve the color and the con contrast of the image by using one of these options here. I think I'm going to use the auto levels mainly. And that did a really good job. And at the end, if I want to, I can also use sharpening, which again helped the overall look of the photo. And now I can click on done. And then that's our final version. And remember, whenever you are in the guided uh, mode, you can always choose a view before and after. So you can see what was before and what's after. So you can compare and see the results of your work. In guided edit mode, we have a couple of new features, not just in the touch-ups, but also in the photo effects. And that is one of them is the zoom burst effect. So if I select that, I can, first of all, crop the image if I want to, but if I don't need to, then I can just leave it as it is. But then I can add the zoom burst effect. And the way it works is that it automatically adds the whole zoom burst onto the whole image, but then we can add focus areas, which is almost like masking out parts where we would like to keep uh, the original image in focus. So I can draw over these people here in the image and make sure that they are not blurred out or at least not too much, something like that. I think that works quite well. And then at the end, we can always uh, decide to add a vignette as well on the image if we want to, which would darken all the corners. That looks quite good. And then all I need to do is just simply click on done. If you need the vignette effect, you can also use that not just together with zoom burst, but also separately from the vignette effect also here under the photo effects option in the guided edit mode. Another cool new feature is again in the guided edit mode under the photo play options is the puzzle effect. So let me show you how it works. It's very simple to set it up. Once you select the puzzle effect, first of all, you can decide what type of puzzle pieces you would like to have, small, medium or large. Let me show you the difference. This is how it looks when it's large. So the pieces are quite big and this is how it looks when it's small. For now, I'm going to go for the medium size. And then once you are ready with the, the size selected for the pieces, you can choose the select puzzle piece and click on any of these pieces. And then you can extract a piece and then you can move it around. So it's really like a real puzzle. And then you can rotate it. You can even take it out from the image or you can put it anywhere where you want to. So I just accepted that and uh, you can always use the move tool to move these pieces around or you can move the whole uh, puzzle around as well. And when you are ready, you just need to click on done. And that's our final puzzle created in the guided edit mode in Photoshop Elements 12.